this chapter, we will be looking at logarithms. In this lesson, we will be working on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Okay, so in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the stuff that you've, you've looked at previous, and we're going to take it the next natural step here. Now that you've seen logarithms and you've worked with the, the laws a little bit here, it, it's going to enable us to do something uh, more with these equations that we've looked at. So in the past, we took a look at equations that look like this, okay, where we've got an exponential equation here. The x is in the exponent there. And now to solve this, what we would have done is, is made the bases the same. So we would know that 4 is going to be 2 squared to the x, and this will be 2 to the x plus 3. So 2 to the 2x is equal to 2 to the x plus 3. And then once I've got power equal to power and the bases are the same, they're both 2's here, I know that the exponents must be the same. So bring that over and I get that x is equal to 3. Okay, and that's, that's great here. But you're not always going to be able to work with equations where the bases are comparable like that. Sometimes they're just not. And so what we do in that case, okay, is we're going to end up taking the log of both sides, okay? Well, whether that be the natural log or the common log of both sides here, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take the log of both sides of an equation, and that will enable us to pull down the exponent. You've got to think about that power law. When you've got an exponent inside a logarithm, you can write that exponent out front. And that's what's going to allow us to, to solve equations like this that, aren't, uh, that don't have that nice comparison between the, the bases here. So we're going to take a look at some examples, and I'll show you how this works. Solve the following for x to the nearest hundredth. 4 to the x is equal to 12. So, okay, so here we go. 4 to the power of x is equal to 12. Now, there isn't a nice comparison between 4 and 12. 12 is not a power of 4. And, neither, uh, well, 4 is a power of 2, but 12 isn't. So 12 is really the oddball here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to end up taking the log of both sides of the equation. Okay, and as long as you do it to both sides, whether you do a common log or a, a natural log, it doesn't matter. As long as you take the logarithm of both sides of the equation, the equality stays. Okay, so as long as 4 to the x is equal to 12, the log of 4 to the x is going to equal the log of 12. Now, that allows me to bring that x down, because that's, that's the rule. Okay? And so the rule says I can take that exponent and write it out front here. So this becomes x times the log of 4 is equal to the log of 12. And now, remember, log of 4 is just going to be a number. Okay? It's just going to be a number. That's it. So I can solve for x by simply dividing both sides by the log of 4. And then I can go to my calculator. Okay? And so that was the log of 12 divided by the log of 4. Just enter that in exactly the way I see it. And I'm going to get uh, 1.79 approximately. And this question wanted us to go to the nearest hundredth, and so there we go. Okay, x is equal to approximately 1.79. 5 to the x plus 1 is equal to 17. Okay. This question is similar to the one that we just did, except the exponent is just a little bit more complicated, and I have to be careful about that. But it's not going to cause me too much issue here. Again, there's no nice comparison between the, the bases of the powers on, on both sides here. So I will start by simply taking the log of both sides of that equation here. Whoops. Sorry, I don't need that right there. Okay, and again, because both sides of the equation were equal, when I take the log, they're going to be equal. Now, when I bring down the exponent, i got to remember that the exponent is that entire binomial there. So that entire binomial will be multiplied by the log of 5, and that will equal the log of 17. Now, my goal is to get x by itself on this side of the equation. Log of 5, again, is just a number. So I can divide both sides here by the log of 5. It'll cancel on the left-hand side, and I've just got log of 17 over the log of 5, and I can bring the 1 over. And so you get the log of 17 divided by the log of 5, and I'll subtract 1. Now, I go to my calculator. Whoops. So I'm going to go to my calculator with that. So the log of 17 
and make sure you close brackets there. You got to make sure you, you do that. If you don't, then everything that you enter is going to be inside that logarithm and you don't actually want that. So now we're going to divide that by the log of 5. Okay, and again, we're going to close the parentheses there so that it's just the 5 that I'm taking the log of. And then we'll subtract 1 from the end. And to the nearest hundredth, we get 0 0.76. This is approximately equal to 0 0.76. Oops, can't see that right there. 5 is equal to 3 to the 2x minus 1. Okay, and this question is really similar to the one that we just did. Okay, two powers there. The bases are not related. So I'm just going to take the common log of both sides. And the reason I take the common log is because it's on my calculator. I could take the natural log as well, yeah, but the common log is just as good. And again, it's on my calculator. I wouldn't want to take the log of anything else here. So once I've done that, I am now free to bring that exponent down and I want to make sure I write that in parentheses so that I don't, I don't make a mistake here about what's being multiplied by the log of 3. 2x minus 1 is the entire exponent on 3, so 2x minus 1 needs to be multiplied by 3, all parts of it, not just the negative 1. If you don't put the parentheses there, you're only multiplying a part of it by that log, and that's incorrect. My next step is going to be to get rid of that log of 3, and it's just a number, so I can just divide it across. This will be 2x minus 1. And now, that log uh, 5 divided by the log of 3, that's also just a number here. Now, to get x by itself, I'm going to add 1 to this, to this side here, and then I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2, because once I bring that 1 over, I've got a 2 left over, I've got to divide everything by 2. So, this is going to look like, in the end here, this is going to be x is going to equal the log of 5 divided by the log of 3. There's going to, I'm going to add 1 to that, and then we're going to divide this whole thing by 2. Now I'm running out of room here, so what I'll do is I'll just write it up here. So in this case here, to the nearest hundredth, and I gotta go through and do this on my calculator here. So I'll put that in parentheses, and it's going to be the log of five. Okay, close that set of parentheses there, divided by the log of three. Closing that, we add one. And now that bracket there that I open, I'm gonna close that over here, and we'll divide the whole thing by two. All right, there you go. And so my value of x here is going to be approximately 1.23. 1 1.23. 1 okay, whoops. Make sure it's clear. There we go. A $3,400 investment earns 5% interest compounded annually. Determine the number of years it will take to surpass $5,000. All right, so now we just have to plug in the things that we know into our compound interest equation. We've done this before. So a $3,400 investment, that's my principal, so $3,400 is my P. Uh, it's at 5% compounded annually, so this will be 1 plus 0 0.05. I don't need to divide that by anything because it's going to be annually, which means my exponent here, N, okay, is going to correspond to the number of years. If it's only compounded once per year, then, then However many years go by, that's the number of compounding periods. So that's that's good. That's what I want because the question's about the number of years. And we want to know how long it's going to take to get to 5,000. Okay, there we go. Notice that the variable in this case is up in the exponent, and that's where I need it to be if I'm going to use logarithms. If the variable is somewhere else in this problem, I, I wouldn't use logarithms. It's only if it's up in the uh, exponent here. Now, I need to get the power isolated. Okay, and bear in mind, this is the base of the power, not this. That 3,400 is multiplied after the exponent is applied here. This is, this is different. I'm going to divide through by this. Okay, and actually, if you divide both sides by 3,400, okay, just think about what that does. First of all, on this side here, I might cancel out the hundreds there. And then 50 over 34, that's going to be the same as 25 over 17. They've both got a factor of 2 in there that I can cancel out. And then this is going to become 1.05 to the n. Okay, now I've got the power isolated. That's, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. For me to now solve this to get the n there, all I need to do is take the log of both sides, just like we've done with some previous equations here. And if you take the log of both sides, that allows you to bring that n down. So the right-hand side becomes n multiplied by the log of 1.05.
haven't really done anything to the left hand side yet so we'll just leave it like that. Now the log of 1.05 is just a number. It's just a number so for me to get n by itself all I got to do is multiply or sorry divide both sides by that log of 1.05 and that'll get me the value of n. So now once that's down to that point right there whoops sorry had an issue with my calculator for a second I will just enter this all in this will be the log of oh oddly, oddly enough look what I did there I have no idea why I turned that 7 sorry that 5 into a 7 it should be the log of 25 divided by 17 I have no idea why I made that a 27 there anyway here we go so this will be 25 divided by 17 and then we're going to divide that by the log of 1.05. Okay, and so our answer here is approximately 7. Point, what did I say? 7.9 here. Now, so how many years will it take to surpass 5,000? Well, it takes more than 7. It's going to happen in the 8th year. In fact, it's, it's very, very close to the completion of that right there. So really what we can say here is it's going to take about eight years. Probably makes sense to round that up. Kim invested $7,000 at 7.6% interest compounded quarterly. After how many years will it take to be worth at least $10,000? All right, well this question is really similar to the one that we just did. Uh, so we're going to start plugging stuff in here. We got a $7,000 investment here. It's at 7.6% but it's compounded quarterly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 7.6%. We're going to divide that by 4. Now up in my exponent here, this is, needs to be the number of compounding periods. But what I want to do is solve for, if you look at the question, it's the number of years. So I'm going to let n be the number of years. And if it's compounded quarterly, I'm going to multiply that by 4. So that's where my number of compounding periods is going to be. 4 times the number of years. And we're interested in where this thing pops up to ten thousand dollars how long that's gonna take okay so now I want to find my exponent uh, there's the variables up in the exponent so I'm gonna have to use logarithms uh, but the first thing I want to do is isolate that power I want to get rid of this coefficient so I'm gonna divide both sides by that seven thousand and when I do that I'm gonna get ten over seven I bet you can cancel the thousand there and on the other side here, now I'm going to go to my calculator, point zero seven six divided by 4. Okay, sorry, point, I should show you that. Point zero seven six divided by 4 is going to be point zero one nine. So the base here is 1 plus, oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Just, just put it together, 1.019 all to the 4n. That's what I'm looking for here. That's what I want to work with. I've got a power. There's really, I, there's no noticeable connection between those two bases, so I'm just going to take the log of both sides. And this will be the log of 1.019 to the 4n. Now, laws of logarithms tell me that I can bring that 4n out front. And so this will become the log of uh, 10 over 7. I haven't done anything yet with the left hand side, so that can just stay there. And that'll be 4n times the log of 1.019. The log of 1.019 is just a number. Okay, It's just a, a value here, just like the 4 here. So to get n by itself, I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 4 and the log of 1.019. So then the left-hand side becomes the log of 10 over 7 divided by 4 times the log of 1.019. This is n, and this will be approximately equal to, let's go to the calculator here, log of 10 divided by 7, divided by, now, my denominator's got two factors in it. It's got this 4 and this log of 1.019. So because there's two factors there, I need to put parentheses around the denominator. So 4 log of 1.019 and I'll close I close uh, the brackets for the log and then I close it for the denominator here press enter 
and we get 4.7, 4 so roughly 4.7. Now, again, what that tells me is how many years does it take to get to at least $10,000? This is going to happen, okay, this occurs in year five, okay? 4.7, we're, we're almost done the fifth year, we're really close, but that happens in the fifth year, okay? So basically, by the time five years has passed, you're definitely over that $10,000 mark. Determine the half-life of radon 224 to the nearest tenth of a day if 500 grams decayed to 13.417 grams in 19 days. Okay, and just like the previous question here, um, what we're doing is we're just going to plug stuff into this equation. The unknown is going to end up being in the, in the exponent, and so we'll just use, we'll just use uh, logarithms to help me get there. So first of all, we know, okay, we're talking about half-life here. That's why the base of this, this power here is a half. Okay, and we're starting with 500 grams, and we're waiting for it. Sorry, we know that it's going to be multiplied by one half. Uh, what we don't know is how much time has passed, but we do know that the half-life is 19 days. And we know that we're going to end with 13.417 grams. It's kind of an, an awkward number, but so be it. Now, I need to find t. t is in the exponent, okay? There's no real connection here uh, between the bases. I'm going to use logarithms. But before I can do that, i got to isolate the power. That 500 is not part of the power. It's a coefficient that's multiplied out front. So I'm going to divide both sides here by 500. And so that'll give me 13.417 divided by 500. I, I don't see how to simplify that really nice. I'm just going to leave it like that. And it's going to leave me with 1 half to the t over 19. Okay, now there's no connection between those, at least nothing that I can see. So I'm just going to take the log of both sides. And don't, don't worry about how this looks. I mean, I know it's kind of ugly. We're taking the logs of these fractions here, but that's okay. Calculator's going to do the work anyway. It doesn't really bother me that this is a little ugly. I'm not going to do it. But I got to know how, how this all works here. I'll let the calculator deal with the nitty gritty here, but I got to know the relationship here. Again, I take the logarithm so that I can bring that exponent down. Now, this time the exponent's a little bit more complicated. It's a fraction, but that's okay. So this is going to end up looking like this. The left-hand side will be the log of 13.417 divided by 500. The right-hand side will end up being t over 19. There's my exponent. And this will be the log of 1 half. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. At least t is now out of the exponent, which is important. Now, to get t by itself, first of all, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 19 to get rid of that denominator. So the left-hand side was this log of 13.417 over 500. And then I'm also going to divide by the log of a half and, to get, and really get t isolated here. So I'm going to divide this whole thing by the log of 1 half. Now, again, that looks a little ugly there, but so what? I'm not doing it. Calculator's going to do it. So here we go. So 19 times the log of 13.417 divided by 500. Close the parentheses to end that logarithm. And now I'm going to divide by the log of 1 half. And again, I close that uh, set of parentheses there to close that logarithm. And here we go. Now, the beautiful thing is the question says to the nearest tenth of a day, so they really want us to, to round this specifically. My answer here is going to be approximately 99.2 days. That, whoops, where, there you go. That's the exact answer that, well, not exact, okay, that's, that's rounded. But that's the answer that they're looking for.